Okay, I got a question for you. What's the difference between a piece of concrete and a sunflower plant? Hmm, now if you said one's a living thing and one's not, that's right. But what makes it a living thing? What's, di what, you know, what's different about that thing? You said, well, it can grow. That's right. Okay. Is this a living thing? Well, not really. It used to be one. It used to be part of a tree, but it's no longer living. It's dead. So it's just a wood chip. It can't grow, right? This is pretty much dead. There's a little green on it, but it's dying. It can't grow. Yet this is still living because there's a part of it that's not dead. You know what part I'm talking about? If it wasn't for this part, you know, this sunflower would be done and there'd be no more sunflowers. But what is it that makes sunflowers keep on going? That all living things can do, which that rock and that wood chip can't do. Well, the sunflower can make seeds. And the seeds can make new sunflowers. Living things have the ability to reproduce. If you're a living thing, you're going to die. But if you're a living thing, you can make more living things. The miracle of being alive. We are going to do some seed saving. And uh, we're going to start with this big old sunflower. So I'm going to cut him off. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Notice the swirling pattern. We're going to process that when we get into it. Remember what this plant is? Anybody? If you said okra, give yourself a pat on the back. This is an okra plant, and uh, they make really cool seed pods. This one looks pretty good. When they're really dry, they rattle around like rattles. And I would not be surprised if back in the day, before they had, uh, you could order things on Amazon for babies, that they would give a baby something like this to play with. But look what happens when you open it up. This is so cool to me. Look at all those seeds. Every single one of those has the potential to make one of these giant plants. So there must be, I don't know, a hundred seeds in here. So one plant could make a hundred plants. So we're gonna save some of these seeds to plant next year. So the next seed we're gonna harvest is from this plant here that if you look around, all the kind of scraggly looking, what looks like weeds, are actually this plant here, which is called cow pea or black eyed pea. A lot of you probably had a black eyed pea before. Well. It's a bean and it's something we planted years ago as a cover crop because it's very vigorous and it's very good for creating soil fertility. As you can see, it grows very well. It's pretty much taken over our whole lower garden. All they had to do is make a little bit of seed and they've come back every single year since. So inside these little pods are the black eyed peas. There's the dry seed, the pea, the bean. And these are kind of small. These, they do get bigger. Um, but these you can cook and eat like any other bean. Uh, you can also save these and use them as a cover crop in your own garden. But we're gonna harvest these and get the seeds out of them. That way we can eat them, make the most of them. All right, so we're gonna collect some seed off of our Malabar spinach. Since we love this in the summer, the way to do that is to collect some seeds. So you can see it's got all these little flowers. They start like this. Kind of like an inconspicuous little bump, really. You wouldn't think that's a flower. But then these turn into these dark berries. And inside there is a seed. If I squeeze that, it's got a really dark juice. And then the seed is in the middle right there. There's the seed. Oh, wow. So we're going to collect a bunch of these. Now we're going to collect some seeds from some of our perennial plants. Again, those plants that live for many years. And here we have some echinacea. And this is a beautiful flower. It's called cone flower. Big, beautiful purple flowers. They're spiky, have yellow and orange centers. And it's a wonderful plant for pollinators. It's also a wonderful medicinal plant. The roots and the leaves are used for boosting immunity. We're gonna collect some of these seed heads. You can see they've got these real spiny seed heads. 
and in all these spiny bits are the little seeds. I'm going to isolate one of these little seeds. There's one of the seeds right there. And birds actually really like to eat echinacea seeds. So this is the kind of thing you can leave enough and the birds will come through here and sit on one of these and peck in there and get some seeds out to eat. But we'll take a couple for ourselves. That way we can make more of these plants. They're kind of spiny. A little bit prickly. All right, one of my favorite perennial vegetables or herbs are these garlic chives. And these are a wonderful herb and seasoning. You can use these in all kinds of dishes. They have these really garlicky, oniony tasting leaves. And then in the fall, kind of late summer, fall, they make these beautiful white flowers. And then you have all these seeds that they produce once the flowers are done. So we're gonna save a bunch of these so we can grow these in the spring. So you just take one of these seed heads and just gently start to crinkle it and crumple it and the seeds fall right out. All those black seeds are the garlic chive seeds. One of the cool things in this food forest is that we want to fill all the space with use, useful plants. So some of these seed heads, I can just take these and sprinkle the seeds right around these garlic chives. Then in the spring, this patch of garlic chives will fill out and become much thicker. And you can take some of these and put them in your own garden at home. So this is our New England aster. We talked about this in the food forest. These are a fun seed because they're very small and they're attached to a little fuzzy part, so that, uh, which is an adaptation in nature that allows the wind to carry them off. Like dandelions. Kind of like, yeah, exactly like dandelions. These are related to dandelion. Spread New England aster all across the neighborhood. <laughs> these are fun to process because they're really small, so you have to be very careful. So this will be a, a lesson in being careful and being slow and patient. Next, we're gonna collect these Illinois uh, bundle flower seeds because these are a really interesting seed. They are clusters of pods, kind of like, they're actually related to beans. And so you see this weird looking cluster. If I break it open, they're all little bean pods almost. Inside of those are our seeds. They're a flat looking seed. Now this is, <clears throat> You might remember from our food forest section, our food forest video, what these are good for. Can anyone remember what Illinois bundle flower is good for? Major bonus points for this one. Yeah, bonus points for anyone who can guess. I'll give you a moment while I collect these seeds. <laughs> so if you guessed fertilizer, you're right. That's because the bundle flower is what's called a nitrogen fixer. It pulls nitrogen from the air and puts it into the soil to feed the plants around it. So this is a really important plant. It's also very beautiful. It's got pretty uh, lacy foliage and it has really cool white, kind of fluffy looking, look like a cotton ball type flower. So that's a nice bit of seed for us to save. If I squeeze that, it's got really dark juice, and then the seed is in the middle right there. There's the seed. Oh wow, 